After a week of PSAT testing, there's nothing better to do than spend that Saturday doing something you enjoy. For me, that's anything rail related. Hello again, rail fans, and welcome to our frequented Central Florida High Iron. It's about 9 a.m. on Saturday, October 16th, and we're heading eastbound on I-4 into Plant City, where the highlight of the day would be waiting for us. Today would be the last day of the National Model Railroader Association Sunshine Regional Convention for 2021, and it was also their massive train show and swap meet day. Located just feet away from the CSX A-Line, the John Trinkle Convention Center would host this year's festivities. We would see some one-to-one -one scale trains later in the day, but for now, the show had just begun. <laughs> Probably the most impressive setup of the event was the Tropicana Plant in downtown Plant City Lego layout. A Y and 2 Jeep is working local customers around and Brightlines are booking over the diamond. Very well done and creative. After meeting and talking with some different people, we began to scope out different tables of HO scale locomotives and rolling stock. There was a myriad of road numbers and colors and a plethora of different builds to choose from. Moving on to some more railroad artifacts, this is Mr. Mike's table, including CSX pictures, some modern rolling stock, and the most interesting thing, CSX timetables. Mike worked as a district manager of the CSX Jacksonville division, that's why he has numerous paper timetables that, for the record, are not used anymore. It's more effective to do it online nowadays. After purchasing many different items for remarkably low prices, we drifted over to my friend Len's table. Mr. Len buys collections and layouts and then resells them after repackaging them and cleaning them up. This expansive display of HO and N scale merchandise would be showcased at the front of the room. We walked back to the car about two hours later with a Seaboard System Jeep 40-2, a very nice piece of Volvo construction equipment on top of a flat car, two new Union Pacific hopper cars, a faceless Thomas Annie and Clarabelle for $3, and a Jacksonville District timetable and a CSX rulebook. I also picked up a piece of rolling stock that will be featured in the next layout update. It's now about 11 a.m. and we're pulling out of the convention center's parking lot to make a very short drive into Lakeland to see what we can find. First stop is the dead-end crossing that is Gay Road. Here, the south and north Winston Y signals are visible in either direction, and we're greeted by an approach aspect on the Winston Yard lead. Looking down the tracks, we can see a distant headlight, and then we hear this. Someone is coming into the yard to drop off cars for Winston. Train Q453 is a way cross to Miami mixed freight, as many of you should know, and today he's coming into Winston Yard via the south leg of the Y. The dispatcher has just given 453 permission from North Winston to South Winston and finally access into the yard. In a couple minutes, here comes Q45316, passing the Winston Y to back in later, also with a nice crew.
Today, 453 would be running a DPU or distributed power unit. I was surprised to see this as 453 was only about 6,000 feet this day, which only supports the theory of DPUs being subjective to Yardmasters and not to the actual length of the train. Only moments after 453's rear passed us, we scrambled to the sunlit side of the tracks to see a high green on track 1. Moments later, Amtrak PO91 would be barreling out of a station stop in Lakeland down the hill and toward us, today with a special surprise. Amtrak 160, the Phase 3 Pepsi Can paint scheme that Amtrak introduced on their GE B32-8s in the early 90s. This is one of Amtrak's new 50th anniversary heritage units that were painted this year in 2021. Well, behind me, we have Q453. He's backing into uh, Winston Yard via the North Lake. And uh, we got an 0910, which is a uh, an extra local that's going into Cherry right now. But behind me, you can hear the racket that 453 is making while he's backing in. And with 453's engines revving in the background, here comes Amtrak 91, speeding through the signals of Winston. Just as quickly as 91 had shown up, he was gone into the marshlands of Plant City and Dover, as advertised with a very clean 160 on point. At this point, we knew that 91 would be meeting a train in Cherry, and thanks to the dispatcher, we would know that it would be an extra train, but we were still not sure about the details. For those of you asking, where is Cherry? Let's use my CSX timetable as a guide. This is the Lakeland subdivision, generally known as a sizable portion of the ACL route from Tampa to Sanford, now CSX and CFRC trackage. Starting from South Lakeland and the remains of the ACL passenger station, we work our way west, or timetable south, past Winston Y, where we just were filming 91, and then to the Plant City interlocking. Those two perpendicular lines that cross the A-line are the S-line and the Plant City sub that make up the double diamond. Just less than a mile west is the north North end of Cherry Siding, where the head end of this extra train would be meeting 91 in just moments. Thanks to the timetable, Cherry is 7,577 feet from end to end, which is more than enough to meet these short trains. We'd soon hear on the radio that this extra train would be an 0910, which we'll explain more about later. For now, 91 had passed Cherry and that local was coming out. We were heading towards Plant City already, but soon noticed we wouldn't beat him to the diamond, so we pulled off next to the Plant City holdout signals. We were just in time. This is 0910, the extra version of 0710. On the CSX, all train IDs that start with the letter O will have the second digit in their symbol changed to a 9 if it's an extra job. 0710 runs Monday through Fridays, and today's a Saturday, making this 0910, and a rare sight of seeing a Tampa local on a weekend.
Whoosh. And off goes 0910 for Lakeland and Kathleen. We wouldn't have the whole day to drive around looking for trains, so we landed back in Plant City for lunch. Although given a lot of hate by some rail fans, Plant City on most days is one of my favorite places to be. The small town vibe, the community of people, and the pleasant shade of the trees that flank the railroad sum it up. This is the third Saturday of the month, which is Plant City's dedicated car show day. The venue for today's show, as usual, is the parking lots of the Railfan platform and McCall Park. 91 was already out of Tampa by this time, and sitting there in the shade, we decided to wait on him as he would have the Railfan favorite, Aaron Carter, at the helm. Sitting there, I noticed the cool breeze and the squirrels and birds that frolicked in the trees, the spectators of the classic cars and the rail fans setting up their cameras. All this together with the subtle movement of leaves falling portrayed the beginning of cooler weather and the holidays. This is my favorite time of year and the beginning of it is always exciting but melancholic for me. I'll definitely be back to the diamond soon in the late afternoon to enjoy the quiet and the trains. But after informing some participants of today's occasions, I walked out to stake out my final shot of Amtrak 91 and the 160. In moments, Aaron was calling out signals right ahead of us, and in just minutes he was here, holding an appropriate Pepsi can out of his window. Ninety-one and Aaron Carter would end this day out, but let me tell you, between the people we met, the things we purchased, and the trains we saw, it was probably one of the most fun days I've ever had on these Florida rails. But until we meet again on these shiny rails, this is Christian from Multicolor Films, end of transmission.